And we start with the Democratic presidential debate and what it could mean for Arizona's March 17th primary vote and voters. It is the first Maricopa County election in almost 70 years being run by the county board. We're joined this morning by Maricopa County Supervisor Steve Gallardo, one of the five county board members now overseeing the election. He is also a former elections department worker, so you know your stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Good Thank to see you. you. How much tougher does it become to run an election when you have a major debate just two days before that election? Well, what, what makes this one a little bit more difficult is that fact that the presidential preference election is much different than a presidential primary election. In terms of this is a closed primary, only Democrats are able to participate. Um, it is a, it's, a, it's a special election. There's only one question on the ballot, and that's who is your preference for, for presidential preference. But it does generate a lot of excitement. And as we saw four years ago with all the presidential candidates coming in that weekend before, it drew up a lot of excitement. Folks wanted to participate, and unfortunately, some of them were not eligible. And there are a lot of preparations we now know that just weren't made properly, but that excitement does cause problems at the polls. What, how could this unfold? You know, on on March 17th. Well, like 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 I said, you this is a closed primary. Uh, independents who normally would have an opportunity to participate in the primary election are not eligible to participate unless they re-register by Tuesday. They have to re-register as Democrats on Tuesday in order to participate. It's a lot of information. We're working very hard to get out there, let voters know how this election is much different. And for those that want to hold on to their early ballots, because early ballots are going to be mailed out this week, for those that want to hold on to their early ballots um, until the uh, actual debate the Sunday before the election, they're going to have to walk them in. And that means a lot of traffic at our polling sites. And let's talk about that, because the challenge is the mail-in ballots. About 70 to 75 percent of the ballots uh, in an Arizona election are typically sent in by mail. But voters, as you say, will have a lot of reasons to hold on to their ballot. So let's look at the schedule, the calendar over the next four weeks. Tuesday, as you said, two days from now is the deadline to register to vote. And this is a closed primary, so you must register as a Democrat to cast a ballot. On Wednesday, early ballots will be mailed out to voters who requested one. Now turning to the campaign, March 3rd is Super Tuesday. More than a dozen states hold primaries. The results could trim the field. March 11th is the recommended deadline to mail in your ballot, but... On March 15th, there's a Democratic debate in Phoenix, and the primary is March 17th with a 7 p.m. deadline for all ballots. There are already four candidates on the ballot, I think, yes. who aren't in the race anymore. That's right. What could that ballot look like by March 15th and after that, all the primaries? And that's, and that's one of the things that voters need to understand, that once you vote your ballot and you mail it in, if your candidate, for whatever reason, decides to exit the race, uh, there's no changing it. So that's one of the challenges. And voters need to know that, that, that once they cast their ballot and mail it in, the, their voting is, is completed. So, but we do want folks to be able to exercise their vote. We want them to get it in on time so it can be counted. My biggest fear is folks are going to hold on to it until after the actual uh, debate, mail it in, and it's not going to get in time to be tabulated. That's my biggest fear. Or they will all show up at the <laughs> polls on we March are, 17th. We are prepared, Bram. We are. Are you because okay? So you set up. A, you've created this kind of Cadillac election. More money, more staffing, more everything. I think that's ever been spent in the eight election cycles I've covered. Does that guarantee an efficient election? We, what we've done is we went ahead and we looked at previous elections. What can we do? Changes, technology was huge. One of the things that they're going to see difference on this particular presidential preference election, you're going to have a line manager, someone outside the polls directing voters that just want to drop off the early ballots, where to drop it off. We're trying to educate voters, even as they're walking in, if they are independent or they're not Democrats, to let them know before they even try to get into a line or get into the polling site that this is a closed primary. You have to be Democrats, but we will have folks outside as well. They'll be uh, well-staffed, well-trained. Uh, we're, we're ready for this presidential preference. For any surprise? Well, you know, we're, we're, it's all hands on deck. We want to be prepared to address any problems that arise, and that's the big the Last big challenge. word quickly, polling places, they will change. Good so point. people need to pay attention to that. Good point. State law says that we can only use half of the number of polling sites that we use in a primary in general, which is uh, 200. And, 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 and so uh, they need to go online, find exactly where their polling site is on Election Day, and go and vote. However, they can drop their ballot off at any polling site. By 7 p.m. By 7 p.m. All right. County Supervisor Steve Gallardo, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.
When we come back, chaos at a Capitol hearing on a bill to ban sanctuary cities.